What's up, Bridge City Church? Pastor John here with... Sam Paladin from the Brighton Heights campus. Very happy you guys are with us here, and we have some opportunities we want to make sure you're aware of that are coming up. In February, we've got our connection groups kicking off. So you can go online and check out all the groups that are available at each campus. Find the one that works for you, not just schedule-wise, though. We want you to find one that also can speak to you personally that you know you can grow and be a part of. But before that, we actually have our men's and women's night kicking off the week right before the connection group kickoff. So if you're a lady, then on Tuesday, January 30th at 7 p.m., you're gonna wanna go to one of our four locations and hang out with like-minded ladies. And if you're a guy, you like hanging out with broad-shouldered, sweater gentlemen like mm -hmm. Sam and myself here, or even if you just like hanging out with guys in general, then on Wednesday, January 31st, you're gonna wanna come, hear an encouraging word, get together, pray, help each other take our next steps, because that's gonna set us up for Connection Group. What else do we have going on? I, mean, I do want to know sweaters aren't required. Yeah, I mean, well, we just look some, really good in sweaters. We do, but some type of shirt. Like, don't show up like you're going to a Buffalo Bills game or something. Oh, it's too soon. That is, that was a little much. That was a little much. You know what? But hey, you know what? We're gonna be getting together, so come on out. Ladies, January 30th, men, January 31st. All right, and if it is your first time joining us here, make sure that you go to bridgecitypgh.com and click that new here link. We want to give you a Starbucks gift card, get a chance to see how you be, got to be here with us, but thank you so much for joining us today. Well, now, we didn't just get here together to talk about sweaters and all these other things. We came to worship. So as we get our hearts and minds ready to enter in to his presence through praise, I want to join you with prayer, and we're going to kick it off. So, Father, thank you so much for bringing us here to worship your name. Help us to lift your name higher as we go deeper into your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship. We praise you, we praise you, yeah, this is what living looks like. 
This is what freedom feels like. Yeah, this is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. Yeah, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. Hey. 
and we will lift up our voice tonight and give him all the praise. Hey, I see you taking ground. Sounds so good. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through. There's nothing like this sound. So why would he? He won't. How many of you know he won't fail? So I 
never fail, you never fail, no. Jesus, rain came in, blue, my house was built on. And I'm saying, with you, I'm gonna make it. Oh, the rain came, rain came, rain blue, my house was built on. Thank you for worshiping with us. We pray that you were blessed by that. We love being able to provide that for you here. And as we continue to go forward, I just wanna continue our mindset of worship with our giving. Mm. And one thing that I am always making a point to say, especially on Sunday mornings, I wanna let people know how thankful we are yes. that you choose to step out and give. Because we couldn't be here for you if no one chose to give. We are part of an organization that I am proud of in Bridge City Church because we're a church that chooses to give from its own giving. Absolutely. And that's something special. Internationally, locally, we can do everything from build a church in Africa to support women in crisis pregnancy right here in Pittsburgh. But it all happens because we have members and people who are willing to step out in the Word of God and give and choose to be a part of that mission. And thank you so much for being a part of that. The ways to give, of course, I always say they're always the same. They're listed on the screen there, but we appreciate your generosity. It's God honoring and we love you and appreciate you doing that. Yes, and as you're giving your gifts to God, we ask you to get ready to give your attention to the word of God as we step into part three of our transformed series. I can't wait for this. We're gonna be looking at mindsets and things that keep up it's not only in bondage but keep us from experiencing all that God has for us and so you don't want to miss this if you haven't grabbed your Bible and your notebook yet go grab them real quick but Pastor Rick is going to take us into the Word of God as we go into part three of Transformed. Hey, thank you once again for spending this time worshiping with us. Here we are in a series, Transform. This is part three. 
We're taking a look at the transforming process that God has us in. We all have an area of our life, whether it be marriage, family, money, vocation, uh, you name it, that we would like to see transformation happen. So what is the process that God has us in so that we can see the behavioral, spiritual, transformational process that we know we find in the Word of God? God. Here's the big idea. It's the same one you've heard the last two weeks, and it's going to be the same one you hear the next two weeks as well. And here it is. Transformation is a process. That's right. It's a process. It doesn't just happen in a moment, but it happens in a, in a series of systematic changes here of becoming more like Jesus through how? Relationships that transform us. That's right. A renewing of our minds and a revealing of God's truth, which is in the Word of God. Now, here's a statement for you. Who you are today is the result of your thoughts from yesterday. That's right. Change your thinking, change your life. That's right. Everything starts with our thinking. Remember, I'm just going to recap here. Your thinking creates our feelings, and our feelings create our actions, and behavior. And this is something that we need to regularly review because if we're not regularly reviewing it, then most likely it's controlling us in a very significant way. So I want to launch out of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, and by testing you may discern what the will of God is. That's right, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In these verses, we find what the will of God is for our lives, that we present our bodies to God, holy and acceptable by his mercy, that we do not be conformed to the image of this world, but that we are renewed in our minds. So if we ever wonder what is God doing in our lives, what is God's will, whatever's helping us not be conformed to the image of this world, what's helping us be renewed in our minds, and what's helping us live lives presented to God, holy, holy and pleasing to Him, that's God's will. That's right, that's what God's will is for each and every one of our lives here. Now, what we're learning is a theological process. Theological. Theo, literally meaning God or divine, and logical is reasoning. So what we're learning how to do is exchange our human reasoning for divine reasoning, God reasoning. That's right, we have a human way that we think of things, the image of this world, and then we have a divine, godly reasoning. That is the tension that we are learning to live here. The renewing of our minds, renewing literally means refreshed, rejuvenated, restored. Yeah. So, here it is. What we're going to do is we're going to drill down on one of the specific points in our big idea. The renewing of our mind. Renewing of our mind. And this is it. So, how does my mind get renewed? This is it. First of all, we have to reveal the mindset. Then we have to remove the mindset that's holding us captive and then replace the mindset with the truth of God. You're going to see these three general principles keep showing up over and over and over again because we all have mindsets that control us. We all have a certain way that we think that we need to get rid of so that we can be proactive in continuing the transformational process. What is a mindset? A mindset is a collection of thoughts and beliefs that shape your habits, affecting how you feel and all that you do. That's right, the way, again, the way we think creates the way we feel, which creates the way we act. If I wanna change my behavior, I need to back up beyond my feelings and go into how my mind is processing and experience this transformational process that God has for us. So, 
This is one of my favorite things I really, really enjoy teaching because I think it's one of the most practical things that can help you and helps Christians live for God on a regular basis. That's right, experience true transformation. I went years and years of my life as a Christian before I realized what I'm about to teach you. When I did, and I really became very familiar with this roughly about 15, 16 years ago, and when I did, it was a game changer for my life. It literally changed and transformed every area of my life and my wife Natalie as well. This is what saved our marriage. This is what propelled us forward into growing, uh, not only as Christians, but growing in our marriage, growing in our, in our family as parents, financially. Every aspect of our life was affected by what I'm about to share with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. The Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthians. And here we go, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty in God, pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's right. We all have these arguments here in our minds. And so I just want to walk through because there's a lot of there's a lot of Greek words. Now remember, the New Testament was written in the original language of Greek, which is a whole different language than you and I use in English. And so I want to uncover some of these words because it's going to help you, just like it's helped me in understanding what the apostle Paul is writing here. So, casting down arguments. There's a destroying, a demolishing of arguments here. It's a pulling down, demolish. Arguments are imaginations, speculations. It's where our human reasoning is. Now, perceptions create reality. And I don't know about you, but have you ever had an argument even in your own mind? Like something maybe you know to be true, but you're not experiencing it, and there's this war up there? And we tend to go to human reasoning rather than divine reasoning. Like, I know God is supposed to be, but I'm not experiencing that. This is the war that we have between human reasoning, God reasoning, between not being conformed to the image of this world and being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Now, every high thing, that means there's a barrier, every high thing, that's separating us from God here. Knowledge in this, in this verse is to experience experientially. That means there's a knowledge. See, see in, in our Western culture in the United States, we think of knowledge as information. If I could just get more information, if I could just get the right information, well, we need to take it beyond there. God wants to take us beyond mere information and give us a revelation that results in experiencing Him. That's right, experiencing God, experiencing who He is. In there, thoughts, perceptions here, bringing every thought, every perception into captivity. That means I want to, I want to, I want to put it like in a, in a cage and not let, it, not let it affect me. Now, unfortunately, as you look at this verse, now listen, most of us live most of our lives, even as Christians, in captivity in our minds. Jesus Christ has died for you. He's died for me. That's, that's truth, okay? And he did that to free us from our past. But the problem is, is we all have a past and we all have mindsets that creep in to our lives that leads to arguments, imaginations, speculations, thoughts, and feelings that are contrary to divine reasoning. Okay, so, so as, I, as I uncover these mindsets, I'm going to reveal them. Yeah, I want to remove the wrong mindset, but I want to replace it with the Word of God, which truly uncovers who I am. 
because I want to experience metamorphoso, that, that transformation being completely changed from one, one thing to another. That's what Romans 12 communicates here. So let's just talk about mindsets. Mindsets, again, a collection of thoughts and beliefs that forms habits and behaviors. That's what, that's what they are. So where do we get these in, from the world, from the flesh, from, from this, this crazy world that we live in, the way we grew up, all these things. But there's these mindsets we have that accumulates and they build up barriers to, to who God is. Now, I'm going to do something, and, and, and some of you may have, may have seen me teach this or maybe have seen this at our church. Matter of fact, I'm not going to hide the fact probably about every three years we teach this series. Why? Because it's one of the most helpful, significant, spiritual disciplines and applications that I believe you could have. Okay, now let's take a look at how we accumulate mindsets in our lives. We all have them. Let's say that we have a mindset, again, conformed to the image of this world, and maybe about marriage. Maybe I think that uh, my wife or your spouse uh, is supposed to please you and do everything it is to make you feel happy and good about yourself. That, of course, is not a good mindset to have in marriage. Or maybe family or, or what have you. If it's a faulty mindset, we accumulate it and it's packed full of things. Then we have a mindset, let's just say maybe about family or about parenting. Um, I just want to make my kids feel happy. I just want to make sure that they feel like they're the center of the universe, whatever that may be. And then we have other mindsets here. And what, what happens is, is we accumulate all of these mindsets we have. And they begin to build a barrier that separates us from the experiencing God the way that we should. And now mindsets come in all different shapes and sizes. Yes, they do. They come in all different shapes and sizes. And what they basically do is they create a separation between where we are in God. And so they, they have a, a human reasoning that separates us from divine reasoning, experiencing God. In all these different mindsets. So, so again, you can, you can do this with physically. I want, I want to see a change in my weight. Well, there's a mindset that has to be changed. There's, a, there's one about education. There's one about every part of your life. Change your thinking. Change your life. So I'm not experiencing God because I am being held captive by these things. So with, with these, now I want to point out that we have a weekend coming up called Victory and Freedom Weekend. And what this does, it's an in, introduction level of understanding mindsets and how we can be how we can get rid of them so that we are free to experience all God has for us why why is it so important here it is there are two decisions two questions that will that will that every decision you make in life will come down to these two questions right here who you believe God is to you who is God to you that's your theology, and who you are to God, your identity. Who is God to you and who are you to God will determine every decision you make in life. What home you live in, what school district, uh, marriage, job, every single thing has to do with these two things here. Now, what we have is if we're not actively pursuing being free, we're going to naturally fall subject and pray to the wrong thing here. Now, what we need to realize is this, and let me, let me illustrate it this way. Last week in church, I used an illustration that I decide before I get to a restaurant what I'm going to order. That's right, I, I, I do better because I make better decisions if I don't get into the moment and allow my feelings of hunger or allow my feelings about what I want dictate that hasn't been redeemed and made in a very smart way. And I thought, wow, what a great illustration. Well, last Sunday night, 
what happened was, is uh, I, I ended up at a restaurant with our guest ministers, and I didn't make a plan before I went to the restaurant. The night before, I made a plan, I stuck to it, it was very, very good. The next night, I made no plan, and I'm going to tell you, we had a great church uh, service last Sunday night. It was really, really good. I'm feeling good about myself. I'm feeling great about God. I'm like, yes, God's pleased. He's honored. This is so great. Well, I get to the restaurant, and the first thing I do is I get a quesadilla with shrimp. So there's a whole bunch of cheese and shrimp in there. And then uh, the next thing you know, I'm eating somebody else's pizza. I'm having a slice of pizza here, a slice of pizza there. And then I had French fries with cheese. I wanted, I wanted gravy too, but uh, that, it was all gone. Okay, and, and before you know it, I felt like a mess. And I realized the problem was I wasn't being active on a regular basis living according to what I know is correct to do. This is a picture of all of our spiritual lives. We can be doing good, 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 but we let our guard down, we become complacent, and actually it can be even in times of victory, in times of doing great. I'm doing good, I'm feeling great, God's pleased, God got glory, people were getting healed, look at this. And then before you know it, I violated some of my own principles here. Why? Because I allowed a mindset that just creep in, just do whatever you want, do whatever feels good, and then consume whatever you want. And I felt miserable all night long, not just emotionally, I felt miserable physically. This is what happens in our lives if we're not actively pursuing what I'm about to give you right here. How do we get a renewing of our mind? Here it is. We have to reveal, remove, and replace. And if we're not actively doing this in my life, if I'm not regularly doing this with somebody and actively pursuing this, then I'm sliding backwards and I don't even know it. So what I'm about to get, give you works if you work it. It will, it will produce transformation in your life if, if, if you actually put it into practice. So let's look at this first one, reveal. Now, Ephesians 4, 17 to 18. Now this I say and testify to the Lord, the Apostle Paul writing, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. Now check this out here. This is so important here. Gentiles, I'm going to use a generalization here. They're not Jews. So they were far from God's purposes. Now Jesus came and, and his love is for the Jew and the Gentile alike. We get that. But in context here, those are, there are those who didn't, um, I want to use the word maybe grow up or understand all of God's purposes because they weren't one of the chosen people. But now they can be because of the love of Jesus here. But because of the futility of their minds, our minds become futile here. And they were darkened with spiritual blindness. Yeah, and their reasoning, their understanding their, it was darkened. Why? Because they weren't seeing divine reasoning because all the mindsets were blocking it right here. And they were alienated. You see how I'm alienated right here? Um, I'm estranged, I'm set back because there's a barrier that has lifted itself above the love of God right here. Yeah, and, and it's inadvertence, that's what ignorance is here, and blindness, and there's a callousness of heart. So where is the blindness? It's not just in my heart, but it's in my mind because my mind becomes futile when it's on the world system, when it's on what I want. And these mindsets separate me here. So we have to, first of all, be willing to admit that we have mindsets that are preventing us from experiencing true freedom. Yeah, we do. We have these mindsets. We have these things in our heads that are just that's making it difficult here. Yeah, but we have to be willing to help one another and serve one another and help free one another from these mindsets. So the first thing we got to do is you got to identify. That's right. Admit you have some and begin to write them down. Reveal them. Like, like just these are the ones I have. 
And, and, and this is where it starts. Then we have to remove them. So yes, I'm alienated, but that's not, the, that's not the freedom God created for me. So let's keep reading in Ephesians 4, 22. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, that is corrupt through deceitful desires. That's right. Put off your old self. So we have to shed our old self we have to get rid of the, the, the stuff, this thinking, this human reasoning that's warring against God reasoning, divine reasoning here. Now, deceit is deception. And so we're going to remove this. How do we remove this? We need to take these thoughts captive because right now these thoughts have me captive. So how do I remove them? I have to identify, I have this thought process that's not working. How about this for an example? In every relationship that you have, whether it be in marriage or just friendship, nine times out of 10 when there's a problem, it's as if the other person, if they would only change, everything would be fine. In reality, why don't we stop saying that if they would only change or my finances would only change or something else would only change and we say, wait a minute, my mindset needs to change. Not from what Natalie needs to do to make my life more happy, easier and fulfilled. How about I need to remove the mindset that she's there for, for, for just me. How about she exists for God's glory in his pleasure? So I need to take that mindset, whatever it may be, and I need to remove it off and get rid of it. So I got to remove that mindset. Now, next week, we're really going to get really down deep into like the blood of Jesus Christ and how these things are removed because of what Jesus Christ has done. But right now, I know that I just got to get rid of these mindsets that are plaguing me here. Now think of it this way. Let's look at who Satan really is. Four things I want you to catch here. Satan is, now first of all, he's the prince of this air, the world system. He is a liar, deceiver, accuser, and schemer. I want you to think about what defines the nature of Satan. He's lying to us, creating arguments and imaginations. He is deceiving us. We read about this earlier here. Deceitful desires in Ephesians 4.22. That means there's a deception. There's lies. He accuses us. God's not really that way. You can never accomplish. You'll never be able to be healthy. You'll never be able to walk in financial freedom. Ugh. And he's a schemer. So if the number one thing that the devil uses against us is lies, then our number one counter weapon is the truth of God's word. So once I reveal it, and then I say, I want to remove this, then I need to replace it with God's word. Ephesians 4, 23. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. That's what we were created to be, righteous and holy. Present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable. That's, that's us being created in the image of God. But this isn't just something we put on the outside of us. God changes the inside of us completely and fully. We just have to decide, I'm not going to go back to the old mindsets that once I begin to remove these by the word of God and replace these, what happens, the more I replace every mindset and toss it aside, the more there's a less alienation, less barrier here because I'm taking my thoughts captive. That thought is contrary to the word of God. And if it's contrary to the word of God, I'm going to line my mind up. This is who God is to me. This is who I am to him. And I'm going to be free to please him and know him here. That's right. 
It's, it, it's, it's not just that I'm going to put on outward things in hopes that I look like Jesus. He transforms the inside of me from, from what I used to be, an old creature, into a completely new creature. That's right. Once a butterfly becomes a butterfly from a caterpillar, it can't go back to being a caterpillar anymore. It's a butterfly designed to live in freedom here. Yeah, it can't do that anymore. That's just like you and me. We allow ourselves in our mind to be held captive by these mindsets that are plaguing us and holding us back. And and, and to be renewed is to get a sanctified divine reasoning that replaces our human reasoning. This is where transformation happens. And we hear, see, now I'm, I'm freer to start experiencing God now and who he really is. I'm going to think and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to begin to think upon these things. I'm going to replace this. What does God's word say? I'm going to say it again and again every week. If you want a change in your weight or your physical health, find out what God's word says Go with that. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Again, sex life, relating to friends, relating to the church, relating to your boss, any relationship, the way you take care of your home. What does the Bible say? Replace the old mindset with a new one. Watch God transform your life. But you've got to be willing to reveal it you got to be willing to remove it, and you got to be willing to replace it with God's truth in His Word. And you're going to experience, just like I do, I'm going to be free to be who God has created me to be. Yes, that's it. Come on, and I'm going to demonstrate this over and over and over again. So here's the questions I have for you. Who is God to you, and who are you to God? That's going to determine every decision you make in your life. That's right. Do you want to be made into God's image the way he created you to be? Then we have to fight the lies of mindsets with the word of God and allow him to change and transform us from the inside out. Not just with a better behavior, but with a better mindset that creates different feelings, which create different actions that come out out of us. So what am I asking you to do? First of all, admit you have some mindsets that got to be changed. Make a list of them. What mindsets do you know God's putting his finger on right now in your life? Yeah, allow him to do that. Then what I want you to do is I want you to ask for help. Ask somebody for help. Say, I know I have this mindset. I want to change. Help me get a different mindset. Help me learn what it says and help me apply God's word to this area of my life. Yes. I just want to share with you something I actually read this morning and it really, really, uh, it helped me. I hope it helps you here. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm just reading through the Bible in a year. I was reading four chapters in Isaiah. I came across Isaiah 53. And something really hit me really strong. I hope it encourages you. When Jesus died on the cross, it said that he died for for my weaknesses. And he died for my sorrow, my grief. There's things in my life that I have weakness. I have sorrow and grief. And sometimes I even have regret. But you know what? Jesus died for that. And if he did it for my sorrow and grief, he did it for yours too. And I just want to offer you freedom. Because Isaiah 53 is all about the cross. It's all about what Jesus provided for you and me on the cross. And it's so powerful. So I am not asking you to come to Jesus today out of your strength and you doing it on your own and you've pulled yourself up by your bootstraps and you've worked hard. No, how about we come to him in our weakness that we can't earn heaven and we can't earn it on our own, but we receive because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you or me, provided forgiveness from guilt and shame and pain and sorrow and grief. And I come to him in weakness that I couldn't do this, but receive that gift of eternal life that he gives us. And he wants to lead us now in freedom and get rid of mindsets in our lives 
and remove these from us so that we can be, we can live in the freedom with no barriers becoming made into his image. If that's you today and you've never made that decision to allow Jesus to be the forgiver of your past and leader in your future, pray it right now. Just ask him, just say, Jesus, forgive me. I've messed up, I screwed up, and I want you to lead me into my life. And if you pray that for the first time, ask God to make himself real to you. He will, guarantee. And if you're struggling with mindsets, just do what we simply said. Admit you have them, ask for help, apply God's word, and watch him create something on the inside out of you, the transformation process. Hey, make sure you come back next week because we're going to teach you how to tear down these strongholds, these mindsets that are keeping you from being made into the image of God. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, Pastor Rick, for that amazing message. And we're just so thankful. Like, like Sam said before the message, where we step out in faith on our giving of our, our time, our treasure and our talent. But the greatest gift that you can ever give to God is the gift of your life. That's why Jesus came. And so as we just heard in the message about uh, revealing, removing and replacing mindsets that are destructive with mindsets that are productive, there is no better mindset than to bring into your life that Jesus Christ is in fact the Son of God who died on a cross for your sin and for mine so that we can put our faith in him, just our faith, and he can transform us from death to life. And so if you don't have a day or a time where you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the way we like to say it here, the forgiver of your past and the leader to your future, then why not let today be today? And so if you want to make today that day, just click that link. I want to know Jesus and someone will reach out to you and help you walk through this process that the Bible calls salvation. We like to call it crossing the bridge from death to life. So man, so glad that you're making that decision today. Well, Sam, that's about all I got. You got anything else? Thank you so much. If you made that decision to cross the bridge with us here at Bridge City, we appreciate you. And make sure you click that link so someone can reach out to you. If you feel like you need prayer, make sure you take yes. that because we want to pray with you. Amen. Well, that's it. May you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next week. God bless you. God bless.